Thank you for joining me to learn about the SBA 504 program. Eligible businesses for 504 refinance mirror those of the regular 504 program. In addition, the borrower has to have been in operation for at least two years, and they must occupy at least 51% of any property being refinanced. The borrower must create or retain at least one full-time equivalent job for every 65,000 in 504 refinance, or meet an SBA public policy goal. Please contact your WBD loan officer to discuss this requirement, as we can typically find a fit. All 504 refinance loan applications must have at least one qualified debt. So let's explore what is meant by a qualified debt. A qualified debt is a loan that was incurred at least 24 months prior to the application date. It may have been renewed within the past 24 months, but no modification in terms are allowed. Any loan modification resets the 24 month clock. It's possible to have a renewal with the same terms that does not reset that clock. Qualified debts must have been current for the past 12 months with no payment over 30 days past due, and we have to be able to show a payment history for those 12 months. A qualified debt may consist of one or more loans. At least 85% of the original use of proceeds for the loan being refinanced must have been for 504 eligible fixed assets. If source documentation is not available, we can often use a borrower certification to meet this requirement. A copy of the note being refinanced and any corresponding collateral documents must be provided. The loan being refinanced cannot have any existing federal loan guarantee. This includes SBA 7A, SBA Express, and USDA guarantees. We may want to use the program to refinance 7A, but today that is not allowed. The loan being refinanced also may not be part of an existing 504 project. If the loan is conventional, but two years or more ago it was an SBA 7A or SBA 504 program, we are back on for using the program. The key requirement is the loan must have been conventional for at least two years. The 504 refinance program carries a 90% loan to value limitation based on the current appraisal. The 504 portion of the project financing cannot exceed 40% of the total project, it cannot exceed 35% of the project if it's a special purpose property, and it cannot exceed 30% of the project if this is a second special purpose project where the borrower already has an outstanding 504 loan for a special use property. Post refinance using the 504 structure, the third party lender must be in a first mortgage position and WBD SBA must be in a second. Eligible business expenses are essentially operating expenses of the operating company and we can paint with a pretty broad brush to capture these. Expenses such as salaries, rent, utilities, inventory, et cetera, can all be used as cash out in a 504 refinance structure. We can also pay off or down a revolving line of credit that was not used for capital expenditures. And this is a very common use of the cash out portion of a 504 refinance request. Credit card debt in the name of the business can also be refinanced. Expenses incurred but not yet paid as the date of the SBA application can qualify for the cash out feature. And any expenses that will come due or will be paid within 18 months of the application going out 18 months in the future can also qualify for cash out use. Ineligible business expenses for cash out include buying out of a partner, paying off existing loans that are not a line of credit or a credit card, expanding the footprint of a building, purchasing additional fixed assets, or business acquisition. The refinance of the qualified debt plus eligible business expenses cannot exceed 85% loan to value based on a current appraisal. In addition, the eligible business expense or cash out portion cannot exceed 20% of the appraised value. Post refinance, the 504 debenture must be in a second mortgage lien position behind only the third party lender's first position loan. Let's look at a simple example of refinancing qualified debt only. In this situation, we have a property with an appraised value of $1 million and an outstanding qualified debt of $900,000. The resulting 504 refinance structure puts the third party lender in a first lien position at 50% of appraised value, with the SBA 504 debenture funding 40% of appraised value in a second lien position. Let's look at a simple example using the cash out feature along with 504 refinance. Here we again have an appraised value of a million dollars and an outstanding qualified debt of 500,000. In this case, the borrower would like to take as much cash out as possible to pay eligible business expenses. 
Well, as we know, that figure is capped at 20% of appraised value, or 200,000. So looking at the resulting 504 loan structure, in this situation, the third-party lender loan would be at 35% of the appraisal, or 350,000. The 504 debenture would be in a second position for the same amount, since we can't exceed that of the third-party lender. We provide total financing of 700,000, which is used to refinance the qualified debt, and provide 200,000 for eligible business expenses or cash out. The sweet spot for a 504 refinance is any project that has a qualified debt originally used for fixed assets. The qualified debt cannot be an SBA loan. And we have to be able to show a two-year payment history of currency. Typically, we're looking at projects, again, of 300,000 or greater. We found a number of uses of the 504 refinance program that work quite well. One is the refinance of existing land contracts. Those are considered existing debt in the SBA world, so the refinance program can help clean those up and provide extended terms amortizations at very favorable long-term fixed rates. Likewise, businesses may be benefiting from an extended term or amortization, and that's often a great use for the refi program. We've used it to take out subordinated seller loans that may be coming due to finally get that seller out of the picture for good. Typically, these are at high loan to value and the 504 refinance program can be helpful in cleaning those up. We can also use the 504 refinance program to clean up loans that may be cross collateralized, allowing the third party lender to release other collateral by providing a comfortable loan to value position with the refi program. A very common use of the refi program is looking at refinancing variable rates where the borrower has experienced increased interest rates and would like to lock in a portion long term. Growing businesses where the line of credit hasn't kept up with the growth of the business is often a good use of cash out and a good use of the 504 refinance program. Some lenders have used the 504 refinance program to strengthen their portfolio where they have concentrations using the program to bring us in as akin to a participant in a junior mortgage position. So how do you get started with a 504 loan refinance request? Well, first contact your WBD loan officer. They'll provide you with a tool known as the WBD 504 Debt Refinance Checklist, which is also available on our website at wbd.org. If you review the checklist and find yourself answering yes to most of the questions, you likely have a viable 504 refinance request. Once screened, an important step is to order an appraisal, which really dictates the structure in a 504 refinance project. We'll also be looking for a current environmental report current within one year as part of the overall package. We'll gather the application documents as we do with our existing regular 504 loan program and work collaboratively with you to seek approval and authorization of the refinance request. For more information on process, forms, and applications, please visit our website at wbd.org.